I'm Zoe Arthurs. I'm a heritage management archaeologist at the Clue Paris Archaeological Trust. And you might recognise me from the door because I welcomed you all in this morning. Um, we'll have questions at the end. <laughs> uh, so I'll, I'll make my way through. Um, I'm the uh, coordinator for this Palmwells project. So we've been working closely with CADU, with Dufford Archaeological Trust, Glamorgan Gwent Archaeological Trust and Gwyneth Archaeological Trust to put together a uh, regionally seamless project covering the rivers across Wales. So first of all, I want to talk about why we needed a rivers project in the first place. So in 2020, it was uh, recognised that riverine uh, and riparian zone features were underrepresented within the Welsh Historic um, Environment Record. And at the same time, ongoing for a long time, uh, is the risk to um, archaeological features from climate change and climate change mitigation strategies, such as the reintroduction of floodplains, uh, flood meadows, and the removal of in-river structures, such as weirs and uh, sluices and sluice gates. And so uh, this project was conceptualised essentially to uh, save for posterity the record of um, human interaction with the rivers, which included um, uh, larger scale projects such as uh, canalisation, um, because a lot of the rivers now are being re-meandered. Um, but it's nice to have a record of uh, human engagement with those, those rivers and those riparian zones. Um, Good quality baseline data is essential uh, in managing the risk to these uh, assets. And so having these uh, uh, records within the historic environment record allows us to uh, manage them effectively, uh, effectively um, against the threat. The Rivers Project is running over more than one year. And over that time, we've been engaged with lots of people. Um, including CADU, the Welsh Archaeological Trusts, NRW, local authorities and river trusts, and wider stakeholders. Um, and what's relevant, uh, it's not in my presentation, but I'll mention it anyway, I went to an NRW event yesterday, um, and they were showing us the sorts of interventions that they are doing, or that they are planning on doing, for the Four Rivers for Life project, um, of which the River Usk is their project uh, river for the next year, uh, two years. So uh, we were learning about bank reinforcement, uh, rebouldering, which uh, encourages um, fish spawning, and uh, planting on the riverbanks to encourage the sequestering of carbon, which is great for the rivers, but we do need to be mindful about the archaeological assets that might be on those riverbanks as well. So I'll talk a little bit about the methodology, um, about how we went about this project. Um, we liaised with CADU and the four Welsh Archaeological Tr Project officers uh, spoke with um, their counterparts undertaking shoreline projects to ensure the regional coverage. It's primarily a desk-based assessment um, and there are some trusts that have undertaken some elements of ground truth in as part of their project as well. This image shows uh, an example of the sorts of things we can capture on a desk-based assessment. The uh, area shown in orange is a historic environment feature. Uh, we use that for, for management purposes. The line shows in red highlights a parish boundary. And you can see the uh, paleohydrology of this river um, where it's been canalised to maintain that community boundary um, and the uh, original course of the river is also shown really nicely in this image as well. Some of the resources we uh, have used throughout this project include external uh, data sets such as the Amber Barrier Atlas by Natural Resources Wales. We also use GIS software, um, which can show us the first to the fourth edition historic OS maps. And the Welsh Library Online has been really useful for looking at tither portions. 
LIDAR has been uh, fantastic. Whilst almost entirely useless for in-river structures, it's been really handy for bigger landscape features, uh, such as this image, which you might recognise. This is uh, Brecon Castle. Uh, the area to the east, um, it's, it's shown... Uh, it's, sorry. It's shown... The dark area to the east highlights um, elite that runs down the Struit, uh, and it may have been repurposed from uh, earlier defences at the castle, um, running toward Watergate Mill at the foot of the castle. Uh, another fantastic resource for this project has been the existing reports in the trust repositories and the accompanying expert knowledge that comes with many years' experience of our colleagues across all of the trusts. And secondary literature um, has been especially useful. Quick Howl archives have provided some really insightful information uh, regarding paper milling in the area. The unassuming but highly effective uh, resource has been Google Earth uh, and street maps, which, uh, without which we would spend a lot more time and a lot more money on the project because we'd be driving around everywhere. <laughs> Here are some local examples. This is uh, the lovely part about this project, is that it ties together the maps and uh, the historiography, and you get to find real places and real, pe real people. Um, this is a garage, which is, or was rather, located on the Struit in Brecon. Uh, housed inside was a water-powered generator, which provided electricity for the street. Um, and just to the right of the screen, there is a, an advert from a local newspaper, uh, which is advertising that garage. Sadly, it now <laughs> looks like this. Although I haven't visited it today, so this is out-of-date information, but this, this um, is what it looked like uh, whilst I was looking at this area for the project. You can see the uh, line of the roof shown on the building to the right-hand side. But it's nice because we now have recorded and publicly uh, available a record of the history of this street and how human intervention has evolved the streetscape. Here's another local example of the sorts of thing we can find during desk-based assessment, which highlights the importance and function of the rivers. Uh, this is a mill race. I'm, I, I could do with a pointer. <laughs> it, 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 I'm sure you won't be able to see it very well from there. Uh, a mill race, which is 1,580 metres in length on uh, the River Groiner. And uh, along its course, there are 11 sites which benefit uh, from the same leet. It's really, really impressive. It starts at the uh, Vale of Groiner Weir, which is shown... Uh, you, at the very, very top of the image on the right-hand side, um, and ends at uh, the Glangloina uh, Bridge, which you might be able to see to the south. Um, this leap is ingenious, in my opinion, because there are multiple mill ponds along its course, and the water is uh, stored and reused um, as it makes its way um, down, the, down the course of the river, and there are Corn mills, cloth mills, uh, and uh, a forge along its course as well. So uh, in addition to paper, it's three, three different types of milling, and um, it really made the area a hub of industry, if you're into that sort of thing. <laughs> so after we've found all of these archaeological assets, we have to record them. The method for recording historic assets varies slightly between the Welsh Archaeological Trusts due to regional variations in software, but generally we use something called MapInfo or HEROS. The project data has been integrated with uh, the regional historic environment records, either as a live input or at intervals uh, throughout the year. All new features are given a new primary record number, and records for new and existing sites uh, have received updates for all of the mandatory fields. And assets have also been captured as a historic environment feature polygon, 
uh, which is this orange squiggle <laughs> you can see in the middle of the screen. These polygons are really, really helpful for heritage management purposes because they allow us to essentially cookie cutter out um, the extent of the feature that we're looking at or the area that we're looking at or groups of features which are important and have context together as, as a group. The primary outputs of the project are shown here. Firstly, a fully integrated HER enhancement with point data and polygons for heritage management. Secondly, a draft report detailing the findings of the project and a project record of the historic assets identified, including a gazetteer of sites, which again uh, comprises part of the public, publicly available data, so everybody is able to access that if anyone is doing a research project on rivers or, or industry. Uh, some of these assets may be considered suitable for designation according to listing or scheduling criteria, and these recommend recommendations will also be made to CADU as part of this project. So it's an opportunity for us to future safeguard sites that we've assessed to be really important. And lastly, we aim to ensure enhanced community engagement through signposting and social media. As part of the wider uh, networking and engagement, we have been involved with the Welsh Mill Society, who have been amazing in providing information. Many of the members of the Welsh Mill Society are mill owners th themselves. Um, they're, a, they're a really great group of people, and they've been able to give us information that have been passed down through their, their groups and through their families and through their communities. And they have uh, enhanced this project, I think it's fair to say. So I, I really rate them. If you want to check them out um, online, I would, I would uh, urge you to do so. They've also put on some fantastic training which has been made available to the Welsh Archaeological Trust through a small community grant. Um, and this was attended by myself and through many others, um, including um, shepherds and bakers and uh, archaeologists and historians. And um, I'll show you some images now from uh, those training sessions because they really helped me to understand the context of the historic OS mapping uh, and images that I was looking at during the course of this project. This is Felinu Chaff, which is a uh, derelict mill in the Brecon Beacon National Park. One of our objectives for the day was to locate the kiln, which, as you can see from the photo on the left, we did do. Um, we were aware that the mill had developed over time. The early records of the mill did not include uh, the later extensions, but we did know that there was a kiln there at some point, and we were able to locate it on that day. And we were also able to excavate the milling gear, which was still in situ, albeit in terrible, <laughs> it's in terrible condition. But um, given the fact that it's been buried for about 400 years, I, I think it did, it <laughs> did a good job. Um, I hasten to add, this is not 400 years old. This is much later. <laughs> uh, some of the uh, other things I'd like to point out uh, from the day on the top left-hand corner is a, a stone-lined leet, which is in fantastic condition. Um, I'm, not able, uh, I'm not sure if you're able to see it from up there particularly well. Um, and the image on the right is the wheel pit with the wheel, again, still in situ. It's understood that um, this mill was out of use by uh, 1899. So the, uh, the period of use for the um, wheel shown here must have been quite short. The most interesting photo uh, on this slide is the bottom left-hand side. This is a kernstone which had been chiselled into the shape of a rectangle, which is, would have been no hard feat because those stones are incredibly tough, which I'm sure Alan probably knows a lot more about. Um, and it had been inscribed with the date 1776, which has no relevance to any particular event that is known. Um, and this date was actually hidden. Uh, it was something that we discovered during uh, some clearance uh, and moss removal throughout that day. And the stone had been moved to outside of the building and propped up on some breeze blocks. And so we can only assume it was uh, moved uh, by somebody within the owner's family uh, in, the, in the last uh, 
50 or 60 years to either function as a table or a step or uh, a little bench, not so little. <laughs> um, I've no idea how they moved it or lifted it because it, it, the area was boggy and treacherous and rocky and slippy and um, this stone would, it was incredibly, incredibly large. So that was, that was uh, some of the things that we found on that day. And here, this is the same site. This is the point at which the tail race re-enters the stream. Um, and the stream itself uh, has changed, according to the owner, so much in the last 50 years due to flooding events and also to drought. They're finding a lot of boulder movement um, and the, uh, the, the river is, or the stream rather, is unpredictable. I'll give you some facts and figures now, just to prove that we did do <laughs> the project. Uh, so CPAT uh, have identified 1,531 assets associated with the Rivers Project, which is focused on the USK, the Honvi and the Groiner. 1,325 of these were existing records that have been enhanced as part of this project, and 206 of these are brand new, previously unrecorded assets. In addition to this, we've created 137 polygons for heritage management, capturing areas of canalisation and industrial systems such as weirs, sluices, mill leaks and mills. In addition to this data, we've established historiography of uh, paper milling. And uh, this has highlighted the importance of paper milling in the region because it was only done in key places throughout the whole of the UK. Uh, and the migration of paper millers um, is you find that people uh, come in groups from these key locations, they come to new locations, they teach people, and then they move on in groups. And so there are only a, a few key locations across the whole of the UK um, that have paper milling um, as part of their industry. So uh, that's uh, resulted in 1,531 new and updated spatial records for our area, for the Clearwood Powers region. Dufford Archaeological Trust has produced 1,114 HDR records of uh, new watercourse features within the Carmarthen uh, catchment area, uh, including footbridges, fords, wells, sluices and weirs. Uh, Dufford also uh, really benefited from engagement with the Welsh Mill Society and um, they had a lot of people from the local area donating information to contribute towards their report. Gwyneth Archaeological Trust identified 268 historic assets, comprising 62 already on the HER, and 206 previously unrecorded assets. As with other trusts, they were mostly post-medieval and modern in date, and included sites such as roads and rail bridges, footbridges, railways, mills, quarries, and water management features like weirs and sluices. This is a more visual uh, re representation of this project. Um, these slides have kind of been donated by uh, Gwyneth Archaeological Trust, as will be produced at the end of this uh, year for the upcoming report. This uh, image, the area shaded in blue, shows the extent of the project river and the scope of investigation and the tributaries. And the area shown in red on here shows the extent of the triple SI, which is an additional consideration for uh, heritage and land management. We obtained some flood risk data from Natural Resources Wales, and we were able to integrate this data with our historic environment record to produce an overlay like this. This highlights um, all of the high risk flood zones within the area as you can see, they are uh, areas of, uh, in the valleys and the basins which have uh, bedrock. Um, and we can then apply that knowledge to the uh, archaeological assets that we have plotted and allocate them a flood risk, uh, which is colour-coded by risk, high, medium and low risk. Uh, and this means we can focus our attentions on specific assets or areas that we know to be significant and that are at risk.
So, sorry, that second mapper was, was the same again. Um, ongoing process. So, part of this Rivers project is really to promote the historic environment to external agencies and make sure that we are considered as part of the planning process because the last thing we want is to find out that a historically significant mill or weir or um, uh, other asset has been uh, modified or removed without um, the appropriate recording. And so we're hoping that this project acts as an outreach uh, and engagement tool. And what we really want to know is who are our key contacts and to find our place in the process for the different organisations that might be involved um, with, with these strategies. Something else we'd really like to do is to find out what communities and the general public want from our CADI grant aided projects. And so I'll be really happy uh, at the end of the presentation when we're having a chat to find out how um, everyone here accesses that information and how they might use it and, and ways and ideas that um, they have for us to distribute that to you and to communicate with you. Here are the details for the archaeological trust that I've mentioned today. Um, I'll leave this up here for a moment if there's any contact details that you'd like to catch on there. Thank you very much. <laughs>